Spina bifida. Spina bifida is a congenital defect in which parts of the spinal cord, nerves, and its meninges are exposed through a gap in the vertebrae of the spine. Spina bifida is Latin for split spine. Spina bifida occurs in the developing baby by the fourth week of pregnancy between the 21st and 28th day, often before the woman knows she is pregnant. Each year, about 1,500 babies are born with spina bifida in the United States. This occurs in about one in every 2,758 births. Hispanic women have the highest rate of having a child affected by spina bifida when compared with non-Hispanic white and non-Hispanic black women. Females are more likely to have spina bifida than males. The estimated lifetime cost of a care with person with spina bifida is $791,900. There are three types of spina bifida, spina bifida occulta, spina bifida meningocele, and spina bifida myelomeningocele. Spina bifida occulta is the mildest form. A small gap in the spine exists, but the spinal cord and nerves are normal. The child does not have any disabilities related to the spina bifida occulta. Often spina bifida occulta does not discovered until the child is a teenager or an early adult. Sometimes a tuft of hair covers an area in the lower back indicating spina bifida occulta. Spina bifida meningocele occurs when a sac of fluid comes out of the baby's back, but the spinal cord is intact and little or no nerve damage occurs. The child may have minor disabilities. The third type is spina bifida myelomeningocele. It is the most common and most serious type of spina bifida. Cerebral spinal fluid, meninges, part of the spinal cord, and the nerves are in the sac that produce Trudes from the gap in the spinal column. It usually causes major disabilities due to permanent damage to the nerves below the sac. Children usually also have a Chiari malformation. This occurs when part of the brain, the cerebellum, at the back of the skull bulges through a normal opening in the skull where it joins the spinal canal. In spina bifida myelomeningocele, the sac can be closed at birth, which usually occurs if the baby is born through C-section or it is torn open upon either pressure in utero or on delivery. If it is open, it looks like a balloon that burst. An open sac will have more extensive damage, so if a mother knows her child has spina bifida myelomeningocele, she will most likely have a child through cesarean section. There are different ways to diagnose spina bifida myelomeningocele. There are three tests which are done prenatal. The first is the alpha theta protein test, which is a blood test that measures if AFP from the baby has passed into the mother's bloodstream. A high level of AFP usually means that the baby has spina bifida and an open sac. The second test is an ultrasound, which may show the sac on the baby's spine. The third is amniocentesis, in which a small sample of the amniotic fluid surrounding the baby in the womb is taken by a needle. The sample tests for AFP in the fluid which can indicate spina bifida myelomeningocele. None of these tests can definitely show a developing baby has spina bifida. If tests did not show it, when the child is born, the closed sac or the open sac will lead to confirmation that the child has spina bifida myelomeningocele. Treatment. The damage to the spinal cord nerves are permanent, but a skilled team of pediatric neurosurgeons must repair the myelomeningocele. If it is discovered in utero, prenatal surgery can be done to close the myelomeningocele. This surgery is dangerous to the baby and the mother. The baby might be born preterm, but it reduces the risk of hydrocephalus and Arnold Chiari malformation. Without prenatal surgery, children with spina bifida are either born in a children's hospital or taken immediately upon birth to a children's hospital with a team of dedicated pediatricians to perform the life-saving surgery. Surgery must be done within 48 hours after being born to prevent infection, such as meningitis and death. 
The surgery involves putting the nerves and the spinal cord into the spinal column and covering the area with muscle and tissue. The area is stitched up like a zipper along the spinal column. Often within a week, 80 to 90 percent of children with spina bifida myelomeningocele need a second surgery to put a shunt into their brain to treat or prevent hydrocephalus, which is a result of closing the myelomeningocele. Hydrocephalus, often called water on the brain, is caused by extra fluid in and around the brain. The extra fluid can cause the spaces in the brain, called ventricles, to become too large and the head can swell. A shunt is a small hollow tube that goes from the brain to the stomach and drains the fluid from the baby's brain and protects it from too much pressure on the brain. Additional surgery might be needed to change the shunt as the child grows up or if the shunt becomes clogged or infected. Spina bifida myelomeningocele causes disabilities. Every case with spina bifida is unique. Myelomeningocele management includes lifelong comprehensive neurological, musculoskeletal, urologic skin and rehabilitation management. Neurological and musculoskeletal disabilities occur because interruption of the spinal cord at the site of the spina bifida defect causes weak muscle tone or paralysis of the legs because of the underdeveloped or damaged nerves that cannot be repaired. It may also cause abnormalities of the hips, knees, and feet due to muscle atrophy. Damage to the spinal cord and nerves prevents brain signals from reaching the bladder, causing a neurogenic bladder, which prevents the bladder from functioning correctly. When the bladder does not work properly, urine can back up into the kidneys, possibly causing permanent kidney damage. Because of this, most children are given preventative antibiotics daily for bladder infections and have to undergo intermittent catheterization every four hours. Because of not being able to feel skin areas below the nerve damage, people with spina bifida will suffer from skin anesthesia. They need to be careful if they cannot feel the skin on their feet or legs because burns, cuts, rashes may occur of which they are unaware. They also usually suffer from bowel incontinence, so a strict, healthy diet with fruit, vegetables, and fiber must be observed. Secondary conditions are physical, medical, cognitive, emotional, or psychosocial consequences. For example, because of being in a wheelchair, people with spina bifida may develop pressure sores on their skin, and they may also have brittle bones because of lack of weight-bearing activities. This slide shows the level of the lesion of the spine and the nerves that are impacted. For example, a child with spina bifida myelomeningocele at the S1 level will have no sensation and muscles on the back of their legs, buttocks, and ankles, and very little bowel and bladder control. They may be able to walk with braces, orthotics, or crutches. They may develop muscles in their thighs and feel the front of their legs and feet. On the other hand, a child born with myelomeningocele at the thoracic level of T8 or below will have paralysis from the waist down, so they will need a wheelchair and they will have no bowel and bladder control. Under the age of three, children are given early intervention for physical therapy for crawling, standing, and weight-bearing and occupational therapy for fine motor, including nerve stimulation to redirect new pathways. They may also be given speech therapy and cognitive therapy, especially if they have had hydrocephalus or Chiari malformation. Because of the different levels of physical disabilities, children can be given braces, crutches, walkers, or wheelchairs. Children are taught to rely more on upper extremities for body support and balance. These therapies can be done in a hospital setting, in-home, center-based, or in a preschool program. In elementary and secondary schools, children with spina bifida myelomeningocele generally live at home and attend school. Because the disabilities vary greatly, some children may be completely in a general education classroom, while others are in a separate setting or resource room for part of the day. As they grow, children with spina bifida may need more physical support aids to keep them ambulatory. 
physical therapy will be continued throughout their life and may include the use of robotics and biofeedback to help retrain the nerves. Children with spina bifida myelomeningocele who have severe multiple disabilities may be educated at a separate school. Students with spina bifida will have a lifelong management of neurological, orthopedic, and bowel and bladder problems, so they will need a plan for transition into adulthood. Those without cognitive impairment will be able to attend a post-secondary education if they choose. Practical plans such as housing, transportation, accessibility to classrooms will have to be made if the student is seeking higher education. They may also qualify for support for their education through the Office of Vocational Rehab to cover assistive technology and educational expenses. Students who are not able to attend a post-secondary school will need to understand how to be independent, including managing their health care and how to find and keep employment. Many children with spina bifida do academically well in school, but some can experience difficulties learning, especially children with shunts in their brain and Chiari malformation. On IQ tests, a child with spina bifida and hydrocephalus may have an average score on verbal IQ, but below average in nonverbal IQ. Research shows that verbal IQ is better at showing how well a child with spina bifida will do in school than the nonverbal score, but the child may still need remediation in an IEP. Children with spina bifida myelomeningocele sometimes show difficulty paying attention in class. They may work slowly, be restless, or lose things. They may also have trouble making decisions. There are activities that children can do at home and at school to help with these issues. Most children with spina bifida myelomeningocele qualify for an individualized education plan because of orthopedic impairment and other disabilities. Participation in the IEP can allow these children to develop skills necessary for autonomy into adulthood. Being educated in the general classroom will help them to develop physical, social, and mental skills alongside their peers and to explore interests and hobbies. Related services such as speech, counseling, occupation, and physical therapy can be done in a resource room. Professional staff need to be aware of neurological issues. Students can have normal activities, but avoid activities which could cause spine, head, or neck function injuries. For children with shunts, activities should not hurt proper shunt function, such as hanging upside down or neck twisting. Professional staff should also have to be understanding of absences related to the unique health problems such as pressure sores, bladder infections, and spina bifida clinic visits. Teachers need to be aware of accommodations for physical access to classroom and instructional materials. If a child is in a wheelchair, he or she will not be able to reach the top of shelves to get materials that might be needed. Students with spina bifida will also need an adaptive gym because they will not be able to perform regular gym activities due to neuromuscular disabilities. Children should be allowed easy access to the bathroom or nurse, such as having a personal hallway pass. These students will also need to leave class early to get a class on time and to avoid crowded hallways. Other accommodations are adjustments made to educational assessments or testing, especially high stakes testings. These students might need additional time, computers, and calculators during the assessments. Some students may have significant or multiple disabilities. These students may need a paraprofessional to accompany them at all times. Assistive technology. Children will need orthopedics such as orthotics, braces, crutches, wheelchairs to be ambulatory. Depending on the level of the myelomeningocele, Students may need classroom computers or other technology tools, listening or speaking devices, or personal aids. Like any parent who has a child with special needs, parents of children with spina bifida and myelomeningocele have hopes and dreams for their child. In the beginning, it is stressful to ensure that their child has the proper care to have the best life possible. Parents educate themselves on the child's disability, 
in order to become the child's advocate, so there are great resources to help professional staff understand the issues and challenges of teaching their child. Having a child with spina bifida can be stressful on a daily level to the family. The child has to have clean, intermittent catheterization to prevent infection every four hours, including in the middle of the night. The child will have a neurogenic bowel, which requires special diets. The child may have frequent hospital visits to replace the shunt, weekly physical therapy, need tether cord surgery, check for pressure sores because of the wheelchair, bowel and bladder infections, and many other issues. Because the child with spina bifida often receives more attention and the health issues may dictate the lifestyle of the family, siblings may feel resentment or have psychosocial problems. However, when surveyed, most siblings felt a level of protection and concern for the brother or sister with spina bifida. The siblings coped better if they had a level of spirituality, cohesive family ties, and supportive peer friendships. An additional fact is that mothers who have had a baby with spina bifida have up to a 4% risk of recurrence in subsequent pregnancies. The exact cause of spina bifida myelomeningocele is unknown, but it is probably due to genetic or environmental factors. Over the past three decades, research has been done to show ways to help prevent children from being born with spina bifida. Because spina bifida happens by the 28th day, before most women know that they are pregnant, the following recommendations are given to prevent a child being born with spina bifida. Take at least 400 micrograms of folic acid every day, especially before conception and during the early stages of pregnancy. Avoid overheating your body. Do not use a hot tub or sauna. Treat any fever you have right away with Tylenol or store brand acetaminophen. Reduce the risk by being a healthy weight and eating a well-balanced diet. The Spina Bifida Association is dedicated to building a better and brighter future for all those impacted by Spina Bifida. For information on ed education, advocacy, research, and support, please visit www.spinabifidaassociation.org.